guys, today I'm going to go through my 21st birthday book haul. As you can see from the title and the thumbnail of this video, I got a lot of books. I don't have time to read, don't have the space shelf for, don't have the money for, and don't need. But it's my 21st birthday, or at least it was a few weeks ago. This is going up a bit late because I was accumulating books throughout the months with my birthday spending money, so I thought I'd leave it a little while. But yeah, I got a lot of books. I didn't actually get any books as presents, I don't think, because people got me different things. Um, but I just went a bit mental with buying myself books um, because I went to London where I went to Foils and Waterstones Piccadilly. Also went on the Amazon 3 for £10. Just lots of things happened. So I'm going to go through them. The first few books I'm going to talk about I got from Amazon and I'd rather not buy books from Amazon in a way because I like supporting the bookshops but, but when they have 3 for £10 who can resist that? I can't. Um, I've got four here because I combined the 3 for £10 with Valentine's Day and birthday presents for my boyfriend so that's why there's not six here um, but the first one is How to Build a Girl by Kathleen Moran I've seen this around quite a lot and didn't really know what it was about I just saw the cover and things in Waterstones but then I've recently got into a few new YouTubers such as I can't remember their proper channel names but Hannah Witten, Lucy Moon and Lena really great female YouTubers and they have a feminist book club called Banging Book Club where they talk about books that have sex and stuff in the themes and I watched one of their videos where they talk about this and they all thought it was really good and I just am um, getting more and more interested in feminism so I want to like ease myself in into reading books about feminism so this just sounds really interesting I'm not sure if it's Kathleen Moran's memoir or if it's fiction but it just looks like a really interesting like quick read that's like a coming of age type thing and just talk about sex and women issues. And then I also got The Penguin Lessons by Tom Mitchell, which I'm super excited about because I love me penguins. Actually, I'm in a penguin jumper today. That is like my love for penguins. And this is a true story about a guy that steals a penguin and brings him home. And it just sounds amazing. Um, i really sad I haven't got around to this yet. I don't really know why, because it's super quick, but I will soon, because this just sounds amazing. I also picked up The Reader of Broken Wheel Recommend, which is a really strange title, it's by Katrina Bivard. I remember seeing this in WH Smith in summer and just thinking it sounded really interesting, so when I saw it on 3 for £10, I had to grab it. It's kind of a strange story, it was mainly the title and the cover that drew me in, but it's about a girl who's never left Sweden, but at the end of 28 she decides to cash in her savings, take a suitcase full of books and go to Broken Wheel, Iowa, a town where she knows nobody. And then she realises this town needs adventure, so she opens a bookshop. So I just think that sounds really, really cute. I like things about travel and kind of needing to explore, and obviously bookshops and books, so this sounds really cute. And the last book I got in that 3 for £10 offer is What I Talk About When I Talk About Running by Haruki Murakami. This is just like a super short memoir type thing about how he got into running and how it helps him feel more productive and just his experiences of running. I think the New York Marathon. Around this time of year I always get really into running. I've been trying to do the Couch to 5k like two years in a row now and I always end up giving up when the coursework gets really stressful and then once I stop I find it really hard to get back into so I can kind of feel that period in my life coming back when I'm going to get back into running but I do really enjoy it when I go but I just struggle in winter and with stress and things but I think if I read this it will really inspire me to get back into running and maybe have like a different perspective on it so that if things get stressful or if I stop I can go back to it. This just seemed like a really interesting read. The next few books I got from the book depository and these were ones that I've been really really wanting for a really long time and they're just not really published in the UK and they're really hard to get hold of. The first one is The Archived by Victoria Schwab. This I just wanted for ages. I've never seen it in a UK bookshop. I don't think it is published in the UK and I know there's a bit of a dispute about this hasn't been as popular as the publisher's hope so they dropped the book deal so I'm not really sure but so far it's a duology and I don't know too much about it but this is by V.E. Schwab and even though I've only read two books for, by her, I have full faith that she's an amazing writer and this is her YA series and I think it's about like a huge library and the books are magic. I don't know, 
but it just looks really quick and really fun and I'm just really intrigued by the story. I kind of want to go into it not really knowing much. Equally, I have The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. There's been a lot of hype around this series recently because the third and final book just came out in the series. But again, this is one where I've never seen it in the UK and I've literally wanted it for years. So I just thought I'm going to finally just get it. And this is a fantasy series, I think, where it's about this girl who... I think she's about to become queen, she's a princess anyway. Someone wants to kill her and someone wants to marry her and you don't know which guy is which, which is just really, really interesting. And again, this looks really quick, although it is deceptively somehow like, like nearly 500 pages long, but it looks super tiny. Um, but this I'm just so excited to read. I've heard great things about this book and the series as a whole and I'm really excited to get into it. And the next book is This Is Where It Ends by Marie Nicampe. I think that's how you say her name. I've heard about this book a lot on booktube but again I've never seen it in the UK. I think it's only just been published and this is a signed copy by the author which is really really exciting. When I saw this in foils I just had to get it. Uh, it's a, just a really unique concept that sounds really heart-wrenching but also like it will make a really quick and exciting read even though it'll be a very difficult one it's about a school shooting that is nothing that you ever experience in the uk like i don't think there's ever been a school shooting um because of the difference in gun laws but i know it's a big problem in america and a very upsetting and difficult one so i'm just really excited to kind of learn more about this topic and how people deal with it and this just seems like it's going to be a really good but difficult read. And then my pre-order of the paperback of On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher got delivered to Waterstones and I'm so happy to finally have this. I got the purple sprayed edges ones from Waterstones and I was also one of the lucky people to get in the first 500 a signed copy. So I'm going to have two signed copies of On the Other Side by Carrie and I'm just so happy. This has two exclusive chapters from her next book in the back as well which I can't wait to read, it's going to be great. But I just love this book and when I heard there was a special edition that was signed by her I thought well I have to get it don't I. When I went into Waterstones to pick up that book I ended up treating myself because I had a £10 voucher and I picked up Giant Days Volume 2 because I read Volume 1 and really really enjoyed it. It's just a quirky graphic novel series about three friends at a university and I've heard that Volume 2 is really good and I'm just really excited for this. I think it's going to be great. And then I broke one of my own rules and I bought a Kindred of Light by V.E. Schwab and I try not to buy books in the series too ahead of time, I try to just buy the next one that I need because then if I stop liking the series I haven't wasted the money but I have full faith that when I read A Gathering of Shadows I'm going to love it so I just had to pick up A Kindred of Light because it was on the offer and it was so beautiful and so tempting and I've just been seeing Drums of Autumn, Leah's tweets about it for a week or two now and her love for it. You should go check out her channel if you like this series or V.E. Schwab because she did a whole Dark Shades of Magic week where she did like themed videos and it was just so much fun. And then the last two books I got were completely unexpected. I didn't really expect to buy many of these books apart from maybe Kiss of Deception and The Archived and On the Other Side. I was kind of anticipating those but all the rest just kind of happened. And that's what happened with these next two. I picked up Caravel by Stephanie Garber from Tesco because this hardback was £5 and I saw it in Waterstones like the day before for like £14 so I'm like I can't resist this for £5 because it's glorious like it's a beautiful cover with the black and the white and I've just heard this is like a YA night circus and even though I haven't read the night circus it just seems like a really interesting concept of like carnival and circus and magic and mystery so it just seems really really interesting I've heard a lot of buzz about this on booktube recently um, although I did find out it's going to be a series which is really annoying because I thought it was going to be a standalone but either way I'm excited to read this. And the last book I'm going to haul I also mentioned in my March TBR that is Hold Back the Stars by Katie Kahn. Again this was £5 in Tesco even though it's a lovely gorgeous hardback uh, that should be £12.99 so that was really exciting. And this is like the movie Gravity, it's two people who have been like are just drifting through space and they only have 90 minutes of oxygen left and it's just really good so far. I've only read like 10 pages of it but it just seems like a really unique story. I was drawn in by the fact that Matt Haig had a quote at the top saying a high stakes, high concept love story from a bold new talent and it just seems like a really exciting story. I love space stories and even though it does seem a bit romancy, I don't know, I was just in the mood for this kind of book. That's why I've picked it up straight away and it just seems like a really quick fun read set in space and just something really different. So these are all the books I got for my birthday. It's absolutely mental. Like to read all these books would actually take me months. And I already have so many unread books, but there was just so many great bargains. I can't resist a bargain. 
when it comes to buying books I'm gonna put these down but I'm really excited to read basically all of them they all just seem really good for loads of different ways and I just if you're gonna indulge in book buying when you know you shouldn't it should be for your birthday and that's what this was so it's the best time to treat yourself is with 21st birthday money let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were and which ones I should get to first and I will see you on the next video bye